Hi guys, it's Dr. Danielle Cooper, Dallas Plastic Surgeon. I wanted to create a get ready with me video going over my daily makeup routine, but also use this opportunity to discuss what we do in plastic surgery when it comes to facial surgery, as I feel like there are a lot of, there's a lot of overlap with what women accomplish with makeup and what we are doing as plastic surgeons when it comes to facial surgery. So as I mentioned, this is my daily makeup routine. I start off by using concealer to even out the tones of my under eyes and any areas of hyperpigmentation that I might have on my face. And so just buffering that out gives me a nice starting point when doing my makeup. So I tend to start with my brow and I use a brow pencil to fill in my eyebrows to give a little bit more pigment. Now I do have um, a good amount of brow hair to begin with, but I do like a more refined look to my brow. So I do use a brow pencil to fill in usually the body of my brow and then extending into the arch and then giving myself a more defined tail. Now I'm not a makeup artist guy, so don't uh, judge me on whatever products I'm using. I just use whatever I know has worked for me in the past and that gives me the results that I like. So when thinking about an aesthetic brow, you do want to have more pigments kind of in the body of the brow and then things taper to the tail. Usually you have less hair in the, uh, the medial aspect or more of the head of the brow uh, naturally. And so I tend to try to keep that, uh, that same ratio of, of color in my brow to keep to give it a more natural look. So there I'm using my brow spool to essentially take whatever pigment I've already put in my brow and kind of feather it into the head of my brow to give it a little bit more fullness, but not too much because I don't want it to look the same uh, darkness as the rest of my brow to give it again that more natural appearance to the brow shape. Once I've gotten the pigment how I want it from the brow pencil, I then take my concealer, the same concealer that I use for underneath my eyes to really outline the upper part of my eyebrow because uh, in order to make it a more crisp line. I then take another brush to just um, smooth that um, concealer into the rest of my forehead so that it blends. Now right here, I'm just kind of pointing out what is considered an aesthetically pleasing um, eye shape. So Da Vinci was actually the one that described um, the golden ratio, which is the ideal proportions of the human form. Well, that ratio, that golden ratio can be applied to the face and even more specifically to the brow. And so for an aesthetically pleasing brow, you want the head of your brow to be essentially parallel to the tail of your brow. So the start of the head of the brow should be the same level parallel to the floor as where your the tail of your brow ends. And then you're gonna want the arch of your brow to be at a level that is above your orbital rim, um, which is the bony prominence that you can feel right above your eye. And then you want the arch of your eye to be just on the outer border of the color part of your eye, also known as the iris. So that's considered the ideal location for your your eyebrows to be. So right now I am using a lighter concealer because I want to accent uh, the different parts of my brow and accent um, my orbital rim, which allows light to hit it, which gives the illusion that I have that bony prominence there to again show that my brow is sitting above that mark which then makes my brow seem even more aesthetically pleasing. So all of these things is what we're keeping in mind as plastic surgeons whenever we're doing a brow lift. We, whenever we analyze the face, we do look to see where the brow sits. Sometimes, you know, with age, our brow will drop just with gravity and losing elasticity in our skin. And so the first thing that we wanna do is make sure that the brow is in the right position because then that dictates what we can do with the eyes if we need to do anything at all, depending on um, whether or not the brow is in the right position. So when we do a brow lift, we make incisions usually in the hairline somewhere to elevate the brow back into its appropriate position. Like I mentioned for women, you wanna have the arch of that brow sitting above the over rim. So that's usually the, usually the end goal when doing a brow lift for a woman. For a guy, their brows do not sit above the orbital rim. Usually they are right at the rim. That's a more masculine brow. Their brows are more straight and flat as opposed to the women having arched brows. So when you do a brow lift for a guy, you want the goal is to get that brow to sit right at the rim. Whereas for a woman, the goal is to have the arch sitting above the rim. 
Okay, so I'm just illustrating again how the head of my eyebrow is parallel to the tail of my eyebrow and how my arch is sitting just on the outer part of the color part of my eye, again, that iris as the ideal location. Again, I'm putting that highlight on the rim of my eye to further accentuate the fact that my brow, my arch is sitting above that orbital rim. So now I'm just putting on my eyeliner, nothing really to talk about there, but I will talk about the upper eyelid. So it's important to address your brows first because if your brow is sitting in the wrong position, if it's sitting low, it might make it seem like you have a lot of extra skin on your eyelid and you might say, oh man, I need a, an eyelid lift. But in actuality, what you need is a brow lift first and then we see if there's any uh, residual extra skin on the eyelid that then should be removed because if you do an eyelid lift and then you come back and say oh man I actually need a brow lift we can't necessarily raise your brow um, because then you won't have enough eyelid skin to close your eyes so it's important that we do things in the right order and so usually if you do have a brow that's in the wrong position we would recommend doing the brow lift first and then doing your eyelid lift um, after we know that we've set your brow in the right position. Moving on to the cheek, I'm now going to contour the lower part of my cheek to give the illusion that there's a shadow just underneath my cheekbone, which really highlights the fullness of my cheeks. And I also contour my nose at the same time. So I draw essentially two parallel lines on the dorsum of my nose, because that's going to accentuate what we call the dorsal aesthetic lines of my nose to really get me a more refined looking nose with makeup. So I'm just blending this in. Again, the point, the purpose is to try to um, create that shadow effect underneath my cheeks to make my cheeks seem more pronounced. This is something that we accomplish in, in plastic surgery, uh, mainly by doing filler uh, and or fat grafting to the cheek region. For the nose, you can make a full video about contouring the nose, but I've just kind of blended out the two parallel lines that I made to accentuate my dorsal aesthetic lines. I also carried it onto my tip to create a shadow that would make the tip defining points on my nose more defined. I used my fingers to kind of blend all of that in. Now I'm using my lighter concealer to highlight underneath my eyes and also on the dorsum of my nose. Again, this is to draw the light to these areas of my face because I want to have that highlighted when someone looks at my face. So for under the eyes, you want the light to hit it because it blurs any contour irregularities like uh, bags or dark circles. And this is what we accomplish with a lower eyelid lift, where we go in and we remove those fatty uh, bag pockets that give you that heavy and tired look. And then you also, I also carry the lighter color on the dorsum of my nose, again, to highlight and try to better define that bridge of my nose so that it looks like a more refined nose. So next I go with adding blush to my face. There are a couple of areas that you can apply your blush, um, either to the apples of your cheeks or to the lateral aspects of your cheeks. I tend to go more on the lateral aspect because it gives a more lifted look to the face. Um, and so I tend to concentrate my color there because it draws the eye to that outer part of my cheek, which makes, again, my face look a little bit more lifted by drawing the eye to that area. Now you can put on the apples of your cheek if you're wanting to have a more youthful or um, kind of plump looking central face. So it all just depends on the look that you're going for. So after I, I, after I apply my blush, I do blend everything in, again, just so that there aren't any harsh lines because you want everything to blend smoothly. So next I will add some highlight to my face so that I can really draw the eye's attention to the different aspects of the face that I want to be accentuated. So typically that's going to be the cheekbones and just underneath the eyebrow, again to accentuate the cheekbone area and also the orbital rim, again to just exaggerate the fact that my brow is sitting above that rim. You kind of want the light to hit that to where that is something that people focus on. I also add a highlight to the tip of my nose and also to the bridge, again, to make the tip of my nose seem more petite and uh, defined, as well as the bridge of my nose. Here, I'm, I've put on some lashes um, off camera and I'm just putting a little bit of eyeliner to my under eyes just because I like the look of that. I'm sure my ophthalmology friends are, cr are cringing that I'm putting eyeliner on my lid margin, but I like that look. Um, but finally, then I move on to my lips. 
Um, now, I already naturally have full lips, but there are certain parts to your lips that you want to highlight, and I'm just uh, illustrating the Cupid's bow on the upper lip. And then um, also want to make sure you have the right proportions with your lower lips. So I tend to outline my lips. I know that is very popular nowadays for ladies to um, overline their lips to get the illusion of full lips. I might do that a little bit and blunt my Cupid's bow. Um, but again, it all kind of depends on what your goals are and what you're looking for uh, lip wise. So with plastic surgery, obviously we augment the lips with lip filler um, to achieve the same look that women attempt to do with uh, their lip liner and color to make the central parts of the lip look uh, full or fuller than they uh, were naturally. So this is the final look, guys. I hope you like it. I hope you learned a lot. Um, if there are certain aspects of the face that you're interested in, let me know. I can make specific videos about those.